Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing off Meshi AI 5. Now Meshi AI has been around for a while but the latest iteration has some stunning new features that I thought I would test both inside Blender, Unreal Engine and give you a full tutorial on just how easy it is to use this incredibly powerful tool. Meshi AI claims to have over 3 million users and a library of over 30 million models. The reason why I chose Meshi AI is because it incorporates many features together. A text to 3D model, multi-view, single view image, retopology, AI texture edit and even auto rigging. There is seamless integration with other applications and plugins for Blender, Godot, Unity, Unreal and Maya. Meshi AI 5 also has brand new high quality PBR textures, a stronger image alignment model, improved stability and accuracy and advanced AI tools like Smart AI Prompt Helper to make prompting faster and easier. As well as this it includes 500 new animations in its library ready to apply to your rigged characters and I'm going to show you how to do all of this. So let's get started. Instantly we're presented with this community library of multiple models that we can try out ourselves and download into our 3D application or game engine or remix and edit for ourselves. Here I've come across a new gallery of PBR related objects. I can pop in and just download these in multiple formats or I can remix and it brings it into my editor as a prompt here for me to generate. The generations take 10 credits and take around a minute to generate. Now when these are generated you can choose your favorite one to proceed with and I think I'll choose this first one and then I can use further credits to generate PBR maps, try the retopology, choose a number of polygons and generate a texture or not. I'm going to go with 100k here and try the quad, I shall go 30k and try the quad remesher here and confirm this. Once this is done we can go in and have a look at the model and here we can show a grid and show the wireframe and what's very interesting about this is the new retopology flow which would make this incredibly easy to sculpt which I'll show you later on. Here at the top we can see the different maps which are supplied with this the metallic, the normal, the UV map and roughness maps respectively. We also have the option here to disable or enable this PBR preview and change the lighting environment to see how the PBR texture would look similar to a low poly game. So along this tab I can remesh again if I want to, choose different, different settings here and quads or triangles. I can texture again and here I'm going to use the same prompt to texture and if I speed that up you can see the difference between the two here which creates interesting variations rapidly if I want to. I can also use an image input for this part and here I have an image that I have saved on my hard drive and I can apply that and texture again for 10 credits and it creates this pretty interesting variation with some seamless integration and repetition across the sides and seams. Now what we also have here, I'm just going to go back to our original iteration, is this texture edit function here. And what this allows us to do is actually AI texture edit which is a experimental feature but also very interesting. So what I'll do here is I'll paint onto here Use a stepped rainbow, as many of you know I can type, rainbow lined pattern and retexture this and see what happens. And this has produced some interesting iterations of this for me. This is probably my favourite or this one here. I think what I'll do is I'll save this to the model. By clicking apply here, save to model and we'll keep this as an iteration and wait while it textures in the background. What's particularly cool about this is I forgot to put it on the front of the model and it's only on the back of the model, so that is very interesting. Let's download that as well. Now one of the features I showed you earlier was the plugins you could get for seamless integration. If you go into settings here at the top, go to preference here, you can actually enable either Blender, Godot, Unity, Unreal, Maya. I'm going to enable the Blender one. You can download the plugin here as a zip file. And then you can just drag that zip file into your Blender. What you should have here on your viewer is a meshy and I'm just going to click bridge on here which I've already done. And once all that has been activated 
you should be able to go in here and when clicking the download option you'll have a button here to send the model to Blender. Now I had to play around with my firewall settings a little bit here so if you have any problems with this try that first. And there we have our vase straight into Blender without the need for the FBX. Now on to some other features here and I'm going to try one from an image I have. And what I'm going to do here is just use this chair which you may have seen before. And I'm going to use Meshi A5 and it's calling it Plush Serenity and let's generate this and see what we get. And for the sake of these videos I'll be fast forwarding the generation here but it takes about a minute or two for most things I've seen so far. It's done a pretty good job of this chair to be honest. It's invented different variations of the back here which again is interesting. I think I'm going to go with this one and I'll go with the quad reflow and the 100k here and the texture generation. If I click on the textured variation there is some artifacts under here but things like the legs have come out really well and we can probably paint back some of these textures again later. Let's try the multi view here which allows us to use multiple images. Now this one's more interesting, a bit more accurate on the back but also a bit bumpy but it seems to have got some good detail on the legs. I'm going to go with the texture, the 30k and the quad retopology again. And looking at this it's given me a more accurate depiction of the texture. And whilst we still have that textural imperfection there, if I inspect the topology, it's really done a fantastic job of creating edge loops around these parts. And we could easily use texturing techniques in Blender or ZBrush to fix these texture imperfections and create a more usable UV map later on. Next, I decided to try a Buddha statue prompt. And the fun thing about this is that if you're not happy with what you have, like I was here, you can just try again, free, up to four times, to get a more satisfactory result. With this one, I added a texture again, because I wanted to create a bunch of ornaments for a shelf in Unreal Engine, which I'll show you now. Inside Unreal, you can either import using the bridge, which works with 5.5.0, and I think this seems 5.4, so I just use an FBX, which is the other option, and you can rebuild your materials manually. So I imported all four textures and built a material. More on this on my Discord or watch some of my other videos if you want a more in-depth. This is a scene I had set up before from one of my turntable videos, and I can slot the meshes in there, play with the light, and make it feel like it's part of my scene, all from just AI mesh generation. I even managed to get my chair in and hide the textural imperfections with a cushion conveniently placed here. Now here I'm going to show you something a little bit more fun and I have my kid robot toy here and I'm going to go with Meshi 5 again and generate this. I'm going to go with this one and again choose a quad and a texture. And knowing that I can queue multiple models on the pro mode, I'm actually going to make this even more fun while this is generating the texture and use a AT pose and symmetry. And here's the symmetry mode. This one's a great, great lot of fun here. It's actually taken the hands and taken that pose away and made a symmetrical model. I quite like this one because it's the cleanest also like this one because there's eyes in the heart. I'm going to choose this one and texture this one and meanwhile zip back to the one I took from the photo and look at the textured version of this. This is pretty cool. Let's use the blender bridge and import this one and see if we can tidy this up a bit. And what I can do here is just show you the sculpting and in fact this quad topology and how good this is for sculpting. I can choose a grab brush here for example and this just moves so nicely whenever we have the quad topology in here. And what I can also do is maybe just go in these areas and smooth some of these joins down by holding the shift key, getting a nice smooth model there. And 
And likewise for the texture, I can clean this up by using the clone tools. I'm not a great blender user, but this is incredibly easy to do. I just grab a clone from here and just paint in imperfections here. And it's giving me a weird little eye here on this side. I could fix that as well. And if I really wanted to, I could even draw in here and try to fix some of these areas as well. Now for a bit of fun, let's try one of our rigged characters. First of all, I'm going to go with a text to 3D, and I'm going to go with a gorilla cyborg character with angry face and muscular body with open hands. I'm going to put the AT pose on, and I'm going to put symmetry on, and let's see what we get. Probably like this one the most. I'm going to go with the quad and the texture confirm. Here's another variation I made earlier. And here I'm going to animate this one and show you just how easy this is. So as well as a quad reflow, we have a built-in animation system here as well. Everything self-contained in Meshi. I'm going to go with the humanoid rig and I'm just going to make sure that this is centered and click next and ensure that all of these are in approximately the right position. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click confirm. And here we have some of their animations that we can test it with to see how this looks. And you can instantly preview these. This character entirely generated using a prompt, topologized and animated and rigged all inside Meshi. Now I'm going to download this and bring it into Unreal, retarget it and use it as a character to see how this looks and just how easy this is. So there you have the full workflow, a third person character retargeted into Unreal. And I still feel that Meshi has so much more to offer. That's only a little bit of what it can do. Thanks for watching today. Uh, subscribe, have a look at my Patreon for further tutorials and guides to get up and running with this. And I hope to see you next time.